This is Tessa Jeffers for PremierGuitar.com. I'm here at the Redstone Room in Davenport, Iowa with an, a guitarist that's won the BMA for the Best New Artist Debut Album of the Year, Samantha Fish. Hi. Hi. Good. 2012 has been good to you, huh? Yes, it's been a great year. But this year's starting out pretty good as well, and you have a pretty big show tomorrow, don't you? Tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, I'm, we're playing at uh, Buddy Guy's Legends in Chicago, and we're opening for the man himself, Buddy Guy. So I'm very excited about that. So you'll be playing tunes from your 2011 debut, Runaway, right? Yes, yes, we'll be doing Runaway and also, you know, sneaking in a couple new songs from my new record that'll be released this, uh, this spring. Well, so you're going to have your record spring 2013? Yep. Any, any hints on what it's going to be called or what to expect different I, from your debut? I know what it's going to be called, but I have to keep it a secret. Until then. Some tricks up your sleeve? Yeah. You know, we're, keep, we're, uh, we're releasing some of the material out at our live shows, but I'm keeping it all off the internet and, you know, just trying to make it a big, big surprise release. But I think, I think um, our fans are going to be, they're going to be surprised. It's a little, it's different than what we've been doing, but I'm really proud of it and behind it. Um, had Mike Zito record it again, producing and had a great team, just very, very, very fun. That sounds good. Well, I've already noticed since the last time we talked to you, you've grown and changed your rig even yeah. in a year and a half. So yes. um, we're going to take a look at what you're touring with now. Um, so should we start out with your new custom guitar? Yeah, and don't mind that. I accidentally broke it. We're going to fix it. So Mike Delaney knows about it. But this is a Delaney guitar modeled after um, a Tele Thin Line. It's got Klein humbucker pickups in it, um, all swamp ash in the body. And it's, it's just got this really cool tin on it. You know, they don't paint their guitars. They just tin some so you get that natural wood grain. I use uh, Diodario strings on it, though. Got a rosewood fretboard. What gauge do you use for your strings? 11s. I'm an 11s girl. But, uh, so you call this your fish caster or is it fish caster? I don't know. I'm still <laughs> trying to figure it out. It's, I call it my fish caster, but I feel bad about that. But it sounds good. I love thin lines. It kind of it darkens up the normal tele sound. And also we got these humbuckers, so that fattened it up quite a bit. Um, How long have you been playing this guitar? Well, I, I got it in June, but I sent it back. It had a different pickups on it. It had a miniature humbucker and a single coil, and it just wasn't quite thick enough. So I got this back in August, and I haven't put it down since. It's, been, it's become my, my baby. But, you know, they, they hand make all these guitars, and so, you know, he kind of, he actually kind of called me and said, you know, we'd like to make a guitar for you, so... I'm all about That's it. Awesome. Well, you had a custom before as well. You're, you're a telly girl. Yeah. You had a, a Larry James. Is yeah, that right? Larry, you got it. Yeah. A guy out of Kansas City built me this beautiful guitar. And I, you know, that one's so special to me. I kind of, I keep it at home more now. I just, I'm kind of yeah. scared to break I figured. it. You know, it's, it's kind of a, it's more fragile. I needed something I could drop several times and I got to work on dropping this one a little more. Well, you, you got a good start <laughs> there. Got, I'm going, I'm getting there. Yeah. So what is it about tellies that you like? You know, I just love the versatility of tone. You can really do so much with it. Um, you know, I mean, I love strats and I love Les Pauls. I love, I love, you know, playing with different guitars. I'm actually really enjoying like 335s lately. I just, I don't have one, but I, I do. I'm a telly girl just because you can, you can really put it on just about anything. And, and on the, in the studio, are you mostly tellies or do you try out the 335s and different? Well, we had, we had a lot of guitars in the studio because Mike Zito is a guitar player too. I mean, we must have had like 20 different guitars to choose from. So we put a lot of different, I mean, we put uh, Luther Allison's Gold Top Les Paul that Mike Zito has that and I got to play that on a couple songs. I mean, it's, you know, so we have, we have a lot of different tones and guitars on the record, but you know, for live, I really like to stick to my tallies. Great. And um, are there different t tunings that you're using? Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm doing Drop D. Um, I recorded a song for a compilation record and an open G tuning. Um, and my other, my other guitars, I think I'm going to keep my old Fender black top, sorry. <laughs> my old Fender black top and Drop D for, uh, for the live shows. I've had this one. Fender actually gave this to us because we got picked up when I was on the Girls With Guitars tour. We got endorsed by Fender. And they sent us these lovely black top guitars, and I put some Klein humbuckers in there. And, um, you know, it's a nice one. It's uh, Mexican made, uh, it's got rosewood fretboard. Plays really well, you know. As far as the necks, do you keep the necks kind of um, traditional to a telly, or yeah. how do you like your neck? You know, I, I generally stick close to the, the telly signature neck, but I mean, my Delaney has got a slightly thinner neck on the back, it's a little bit wider. Um, and I've gotten used to it, so it's hard playing anything else. This is a little bit thicker. It feels more like a baseball bat. Yeah. Um, but I like to, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I like to keep it 
simple and straight ahead, really. Um, but yeah. So you said you're gonna start using a different tuning on this one? Yeah, I might put this one in open G and use it for slide. I might I'm, I do it in drop D and use it for slide as well because this has got a really rocking sound and one of the songs on my new record is just very in your face. balls to the wall very <laughs> very rocking you know so I think this would be a perfect guitar to throw on that one great and you also use your slide on a special guitar let's take this a guitar. look at cigar box this is a cigar box guitar bought it down oh sorry bought it down in Helena Arkansas um, actually from a guy who lives in Plattsburgh Missouri it's a Stogie Box Blues cigar box guitar. It's got a P90 pickup, you know, a uh, cigar box nailed to a stick. <laughs> so is that something that you just found? So yeah. Or did you know the guy? Or We were walking down the street. There's a big festival every year and we got hired to play at the King Biscuit this year, which is a big honor for me. Um, but they, they have a midway that you can walk down and they've got vendors who sell art and jewelry. And uh, they, this guy was selling these, uh, these guitars. Had you ever played one? Um, no, I'd never played one. I sat down and my drummer actually pointed out this red one um, and I just fell in love with it, sat down with it. It's got an incredible tone. That P90 pickup really just makes it so fat and it's got a really good attack. Um, I saw a video. It sounded really good. Yeah. We'll pull, so we'll how do, pull it when, when do you pull out? Like if you're just feeling like doing something different or certain songs or? I've got it on certain songs, you know, because it's tuned to open G. So, you know, it's hard, it's hard to tune it to a completely new key. I'm going to have point. to get like six of these guitars and tune them to different <laughs> tunings. You know, so I can flip back and forth during my show. Because um, it's hard to sit there during a show and all right, definitely drop it all the way down or bring it all the way up. Um, but no, I've got a few songs that I play it on. Just really kind of swampy, nasty deltas or grooving stuff. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So uh, you have four different slides, it looks like. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, okay. This is a, a brass slide I got at the Chicago Music Exchange. And um, I use it when I'm like, really just playing something nasty. This one's kind of special because it's got a weighted end. It's got a, you know, the end of it is flattened. And I, what I really like about it is this groove that's cut in here so I can put it on and it just fits right here. It looks smooth. Yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't slide around too much. Cause I think that's a problem. That's a problem I have. You know, a lot of the brass slides are kind of big and they flop around and it's, you don't get as much control. So with this, it's like really good, you know, a lot of control. Do you and find more control with glass or brass? You know, lately I've been finding it more with my glass slide, but uh, I go back and forth, you know, I go back and forth between what I like and what I, what I use. But I use this when I want to do something really nasty, like when we cover R.L. Burnside, I use my brass. Um, and I got this slide in San Francisco. It's a glass slide. And I use this for more, you know, pretty stuff, stuff that's, it's a lot smoother um, to play. Like, uh, I, can, I can mess up a lot more with a glass slide than I can a brass. This one's a lot bigger, but, you know, it doesn't slide around too much. You, I switch it around. I don't have a finger. I was going to ask you, I, you were playing with your pinky. Do you use other fingers? I use my pinky on this brass one, but I've been kind of moving this over to my ring finger. Just I get a little more control out of it. Um, I haven't, I, I'm new to slides, so I'm still figuring it out. Um, but, yeah, I like to flip it back and forth. I'm, I'm getting comfortable with it still. I went to Pennsylvania, and I forgot all my slides at home, and I needed it for a couple songs. So Smoking Joe Quebec, he's such a nice guy, lets me borrow his slide, and I stole it. So I still have it. Eventually, I'm going to give it back to him. You are going to give it back to him? Oh, yeah. I'm going to hold on to it. If I'm I don't sure he forgot it about it. He probably did, but <laughs> I'm going to get it back to him. And then this beautiful new guitar. This is your newest guitar. Tell yes. us about this one. I got this for Christmas. I, um, I've been really? wanting a resonator dobro for a long time. And, uh, you know, that's chrome on brass. It's a Dean R-E-S-C-G, I think is the model. It's got beautiful, you know, engravings. And it's really cool. Um, I'm Who got that for you? My my sweetheart did. He's so nice. Um, so you've only had it about a week or two weeks. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm still I'm still figuring it out. You know, I had a song on my record uh, that we did on a dobro. So I figured I got to get one because I've been doing a lot of solo acoustic stuff, but I would just do it with my electric guitar. And I love the sound of resonator guitars. I love you know steel guitars. So I've been trying to pick it up and and work it out. Um, I may not keep the pickup that's currently in it. I might soup it up a little bit and. Samanthify it. So is it kind of daunting to, because you've only had it two weeks, do you just kind of like, well, I guess I'll try it on this song, or have yeah. you, ha, do you have a good idea of what you want to play it on? I have a good idea of what I'm going to use it for. Um, I'm still, you know, and part of me is like, I got to learn some more songs and write some more songs so I can have a, a special set, you know. Uh, I, I'm trying to figure out all my songs on that guitar, though, so if I ever have to go do a solo acoustic show to open for somebody, I can 
you know, put it on that or an acoustic guitar. I've got another acoustic at home that I've never brought out, but I need oh, to. Oh, really? Yeah. So you don't have an acoustic on tour? No. Besides? No, I've got the... What kind of acoustic do you play? I have a, an Alvarez. It's like a 1970s Alvarez. I don't know what, what the model number is exactly or, you know, what the model is, but um, that's been my throw-around guitar. I've had it for years, and it's it's a workhorse, man. I've been mean to it, and it, <laughs> it's very cool. It's, it's still... That's what they're for, right? Yeah, I guess. Um, Never fallen down the stairs, so we're still good. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, ha- we posted on our Facebook for fans to be able to ask you questions and someone was wondering what was the first guitar that you ever got and fell in love with who first guitar I ever fell in love with well I had this studio uh, vintage mahogany Les Paul um, and that was my first live guitar the first guitar I took out I had um I had a black telecaster before that and then this um, it was like just kind of a homemade Stratocaster that somebody built and uh, the Les Paul was the first thing I had that would really stay in tune so I took that out, and I really liked it. But that Larry James guitar, I, was the f- I mean, I think that's when my telly love fell to place because the first night I had that guitar to show, it just felt like my playing opened up, and I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know I could do that. That's cool. And I think that's what a new guitar will do for you, too, at times. It just, like, kind of gives you new ideas on the way to approach it. But um, And Larry James was from your hometown. Yeah, right? yeah, Kansas he lives City. in Kansas City. Yeah. So was that something that you had built for? like worked with him to build? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah awesome. I mean, he asked You're me. You're a custom kind of girl, huh? Oh, you know, <laughs> I I can't make up my mind on anything. I went, actually, I've, what I fell in love with originally was a G&L ASAC Classic Semi Hollow Blues Boy, and I couldn't afford it. So I wanted I wanted something like that, and he built me this beautiful custom guitar, and it was very, it's my first love, really. And so that's yeah. that's safe at home? That's safe at home. That, uh, one's, that one's a keepsake, and I do not want to jack it up. Gotcha. <laughs> I don't want to jack any of these up, but... You know, we'll wait. And when <laughs> I get the next sometimes. guitar, then they'll stay at home. It's safe, you know. All right. So you've also changed your amp setup, right? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, so tell us a little bit. Your what are you using now? Um. Well, this is a Category Five, Andrew. Uh, they both are the same. This is uh, one's an extension cab of the other, but they each have a 12 and a 10 inch speaker inside, all tube. Um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of tube amps. I'm, you know, I just love that natural tone when when the amp gets heated up. It just, it sounds good. What was it about these Category 5s that, did you, like, test a bunch out, or? Well, um, Don Ritter, the the guy who owns the company, I mean, he endorses, I mean, it's a pretty big company now. They've got Joe Bonamassa and Warren Haynes and uh, Tab and Wall plays these. I, I just, a lot of my favorite players, like yeah, my Tab's one of your Yeah. Or something. Well, I just, I love the way, you know, that tone and your know, monster amps, and I don't think he had any females that he had on his roster, so. Finally, you know, I got him to build this amp for me, and we kind of, we worked together, because this is a custom amp, too. You know, he put a different kind of setup in there for what he thought I'd like, and, uh, yeah, it's been semantified. Do you, <laughs> do you usually play, like, on clean, or are there certain settings, or? Um, well, there's a, I think the first channel is a clean channel, the second one's a little dirtier. I, and I, I use the second channel just because I can, uh, I, I can adjust, you know, the bass and the, and the treble for the guitars, because... You know, going from the Dobro to uh, the Telecaster, it's a lot different. I have to adjust it. So I generally just stick with the second channel. Um, but, you know, I switch it up. When I'm playing clean, I don't use any pedals and yeah. just go straight through the amp. It's got a great tone. All right, so you said you're a minimalist. So yeah. tell you like the OCD, full-tone OCD? I'm a big fan of the OCD full-tone. It's just got a really natural sound. I mean, it, it just sounds to me like the way the amp does when it's turned up really loud. So if you're in a club... Sometimes we get into clubs uh, where you can't turn it up as much as you'd like to get the amp to break up. So that OCD just kind of kicks on that gain distortion, and I really like it. Because I'm, I'm a big fan of the natural stuff. I don't like a lot of heavy distortion. Um, so I think that one's closer to what I like. I am getting some different pedals for the new record release. I've got a couple You're songs. you experiment? Yes, yes. We used a Crosstown Fuzz in the studio from Mojo Hand Effects I really, really liked. And I got to get a, a tremolo pedal, so I'm going to get a Bayou Trem from the same company, Mojo Hand Effects. Um, you know, slowly expanding. Yeah. Teach. I can learn new tricks <laughs> sometimes. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of this OCD full tone. You can really, you know, do a lot, do a lot with it. And the uh, MXR Modified OD, it's a, yeah, it's a custom badass. That's what it says in small little letters. Um, I so how often do you? Okay. Oh, I kick that one on um, just when I'm really, you know, looking for a big boost. 
Uh, I got that one from Mike Zito as a present, which I'm still I'm still figuring it out. It's got it's a lot hotter, you know. It's it's a lot more prone to, you know, feeding back a little bit if I don't have it dialed in just right. So, I'm I'm still figuring it out for myself. Um, but I, I like it. It does. It adds kind of a another dynamic. You can go really, really loud and really, you know, rock. And that's when I really want to rock. I hit that pedal. Yeah.